What the heck do you need these for? I'm about to tell you, stay tuned. You wanna know this? I will be showing a lot of clips of this painting where I made a point to use a lot of these hacks. Let's go ahead and get started with hack number one. And that is a cascade container. This is a container for cascade dishwash. Let me go get it. Cause I'm, I'm just a little, little, little. So you take this lid off. Let's see, or throw that somewhere off camera. <laughs> behave <laughs> anyway so this has this lid with these little indentations on it and you can put brushes on there now you don't see me using this in my studio a lot because I'm filming a lot so I have to make everything kind of aesthetically pleasing I feel like you can even wrap some washi tape around this and kind of decorate it make it look cute so you could put it in your studio and this could be your very large water container for rinsing your brushes and then you can just sit your brushes right on here. This is from Diane Zimmerman, who is the owner of the group Watercolor Beginners and Beyond on Facebook. And it's got like over 100,000 people on it. And it's such a great group. She also has a blog, she has a YouTube channel, and this is one of her hacks. And she's also got a few other hacks that I'm gonna share with you in today's video. So thank you, Diane Zimmerman, who is also on my Patreon. Thank you so much, Diane Zimmerman, for making me famous. I love you. Mwah. Okay, next idea that I am excited to share with you is curve tape. This curve tape. Let me see if I can find it. Gotch makes this. It's, uh, gosh, it's got cat hair attached to it. <laughs> Rude, gross. And you can use this to create curves in your art. I think it would be fun if you're doing a big enough piece to do um, lettering with it. But uh, I tried it in this current painting that I'm working on, and it didn't have quite the right effect, but I think it's a good thing to have in your arsenal whenever you need a curve and you need to tape off an area. So what you would do is, if you wanna save the white of the paper or paint an area, let it dry, and then put this on top of it where you want a lighter curved area, like say in lettering or the squiggly whirly things and patterns, whatever. Um, you can make a really cool pattern in a background with this, um, with curves, big, big arching curves. So you tape it onto your artwork and then paint over it. And then when you're done with the artwork, you lift it up and it's left the white of the paper or canvas or whatever you're working on below. So this is another one from Diane Zimmerman and it's a, a splatter guard. This is, um, well, actually she used a splatter guard. So I used a sieve. You paint the paint onto this splatter guard. I've got about milk consistency paint. Be sure to check out my video on milk tea and cream consistency paint if you don't know what that means. And let's give this a try. Whether you're working in acrylic or watercolor or ink, I think you could use this. And then you get a straw and you can blow spatter onto your painting. So this is giving me some spatter in a more controlled area. It's not like going everywhere. Without it going everywhere. Like for example, my drapes. Let me show you all the spatter I have on my drapes. Can you see that? <laughs> so thank you again, Diane Zimmerman, for this great idea. Um, Next, sprayers. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. So uh, us watercolors especially, I think are always trying to get that perfect, <laughs> not perfect. Perfect, you gotta do a little pop at the end, no, uh, perfect. Uh, we watercolor artists are always trying to get the perfect little splatter, and so we go to great lengths to do that. And so, this is powered by Preval. You're supposed to be able to put car paint, acrylic, uh, watercolor paint, any kind of paint in it. Amazing spray system. There's a twist to this though. The reason why it's so great is it clogs up and when it clogs up, that's when it creates the perfect splatter. So I tried this out. You just attach it like that. It's all nice and shook up, shaken up, shook up. Now I'll... So that does make a really nice splatter effect. I like that. All right, so I'm gonna do just a little bit more along the bottom and call it good. All right, so that creates a really cool spatter effect. And I definitely think this is something, if I was working in a larger format, I'd use more often. 
but uh, the possibilities are really exciting. It did clog up and it clogged up after just a few sprays, but it did give me a really cool splatter. Uh, but you do have to declog it because it will clog completely and just stop spraying. My cat is having cat crazies. Oh my gosh. Come here, kitty. Not coming over here to say hi. I'm rambling, stop. Okay. All right, while we let that dry, let me show you another thing I want to show you. I saw this on Amazon and it's meant for holding makeup brushes. But I think what would be a great idea is to put a little sticky right here and then hang it from the bottom of a shelf. So, uh, oops, my brushes fell out because I didn't have them in the tight ones, but there's uh, room for larger brushes, medium brushes, and smaller brushes. And this really holds onto them if you put them in the right. I mean, they're not going anywhere. So I really like this holder and I've actually been using it a lot and it sits up nicely on my desk like this and that's how I like it. So that's how I use it. But this is a great little brush holder. Next we have an electric eraser. And I learned about this first from Tom Lynch and Tom Lynch has a channel on here and he also has a lot of great products, which I use his palette. I love his palette. You can still buy that on Dick Blick. And by the way, a lot of those links are in my description below, along with other art goodies. If you want to learn watercolor with me, lots of good stuff down in the description. There is a trick to it though. You can't just use any eraser nub. You've got to use a sand eraser. Let's take a look at this thing. I'll pull mine out. I'll pull mine out if you'll pull yours out. Great, don't talk like that. This is a G-rated video. It is a G-rated video, so we're going to keep it that way. All right, so this is by Sun Dolphin. So that's Sun Dolphin electric eraser, and you have to use the sand ink eraser uh, nib in it. And you can use this to get really fine little details, like Tom Lynch had a painting that he did that had a uh, neon sign with dots in it and this is the perfect thing this isn't for large areas but if you need a line or dots in your watercolor painting so i do have some footage of me using this so let's take a look at that we'll edge and also soften this and i think it works better on areas that don't have a lot of paint in them. Yay. All right, uh, you can't see. Um, if you are on my Patreon especially, or you watch every single of my video, you've seen this, you need this in your life. This is a Kemper Fluid Writing Tool. Okay, Julie Kraut is the uh, person on what, I think it was on Watercolor Beginners and Beyond Group. She left a comment about the Kemper Fluid Writer Tool. So Julie Kraut, thank you for the Kemper Fluid Writer Tool hack. And I think this is, was originally invented for, again, car paint touch-ups. So this is designed to work with lots of different things like watercolor, acrylic, ink. No kitty, no. My outdoor kitty still wants to go outdoors. And anything liquid, masking, I've used it with masking. And in this painting that I'm showing you right now, I used it for the line going up to the kite. I use this a lot for whiskers. So the way that I fill this up, for today's use, I'm going to put masking fluid in it, but I'm going to use removable Winsor & Newton Art Masking Fluid. Do not water it down. I've tried that, and it will come out of the tool too quickly and leave blobs for you. And then what I do is I just use a, a dropper tool and get some, some masking. And then you got to make sure that you keep this upright. And also, I clean my dropper out immediately because I do not want to get masking stuck in there and I just squeeze it. This does come with this little screwed in needle thing that you can stick in there and clean it out if it gets clogged. All right, so first I'm going to make sure this is working and then I'm just going to draw my line to the kite and that's a very fine line. It's amazing how tiny that line is. And then I'm just going to use this to also draw some of these. I might put in some little waves while I'm at it. You definitely need this in your arsenal if you're an artist. Kitty, can you just let me catch you? Hard no. By the way, do you like my shirt? Because I got this in honor of my late cat Sadie. I will link a video here if you want to learn about Sadie. Okay, the drafting eraser. 
Thank you also to Jane Honeycutt for this great idea about a drafting eraser. She's a great friend. We went to Japan together and she's also a member on my Patreon. So thank you, Jane, for all your support and this great idea about a drafting eraser. So this is by Alvin and it's a dry cleaning pad. That's what it's called. And I will link this below along with all this other stuff I'm talking about. So let's see how this works. Boom. See, I've already used it. It's a little dirty, but you just, ooh, it's like, snowing on my studio floor eraser bits so this is a dry erase pad you just twist it over your painting and then you rub gently to erase your pencil marks a little this eraser is used by i think professional like architects and things when they get a smudge on their paper it was designed to take dirt and oil marks off of paper but it's a great way to really delicately erase your drawing line so when you're doing a line drawing onto your paper, you put your line drawing onto your paper with a number two pencil. Remember, don't use softer pencils because they smudge, but a number two pencil, and then you need to lighten your lines. You can use this drafting eraser. This is a great way to really be gentle and delicate with your paper, especially if you're using more delicate papers, like say a hot press paper, Arch cold press, Hannah Mule cold press paper, you don't need to use this, but like a hot press paper, this is a good little tool to have in your arsenal when you need to erase really delicately. I love new ideas. Let's do the next one, wreath hanger. This was a little teaser I did at the beginning. This wreath hanger, idea also came from Diane Zimmerman. She has so many good ideas, right? Or why do you need a wreath hanger, Rach, in your studio? Let me show you. Now I need to rest my arm a little bit better, but I don't want to rest it on the painting. So I'm going to use this. It's a wreath hanger. I'm going to put it over my painting so I can rest my arm, but not touch the masking I just put on. But what you can use it for is as a hand rest. So if you have wet paint and you don't want to get your hand in the wet paint and you don't want to wait for the painting to dry, you just put this like a bridge over the wet area on your painting and you can rest your hand on it and keep painting in a different area of the painting. It'll keep your arm and your hand off the wet paint. Probably seen this before if you're a Patreon member at the $3 level, this is exactly the kind of thing that I told my Patreon members about months ago. This next hack is for those of us, me included, that die a little using expensive paper to paint studies and practice pieces before creating the final mastel piece. And thank you to Farjana Drawing Academy for this cool idea. First, you put mailing tape over the entire back of office paper. Yep, that's right. This hack makes it possible to paint studies on super cheap office paper. This is a wallet game changer. So after you've taped it back, paint as usual on the front. Here I'm painting a study of an idea I had to create a Halloween themed painting of a dog in a unicorn costume. Of course, you can't do most watercolor effects on this paper, but it is a great way to try out colors and values to see if they all work together before you paint the final piece. All right, this next hack is inspired by Deborah Lynn Rosenbach. She does amazing loose florals. And if you like loose painting and you like flowers, you're gonna love her channel. But her paintings take a lot of water, which is true of a lot of loose painting. And so when you paint watercolor with a lot of water, the inevitable puddles form. And if they get too soupy, you really can't have any control over your paint and where it flows to. So to delicately wick up water without moving the paint, you can use toilet paper. In this tutorial of a loose tabby cat I did on hot press paper, I was using a ton of water for the background. When I needed to remove puddles, I took toilet paper and lay them over the entire area, then lifted. As you can see, the paint stays on the paper, but the excess water is removed. This has been so fun. Thank you so much for joining me for this hacks video. Now go binge my content and go paint your world beautiful. Bye everybody. And so until next time, I don't have it. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. So you take this lid off, let's see.